I had a suggestion from a subscriber. He said, why don't you make a jump frog? Well, these are jump frogs, and they're normally used in places like Thailand, where they go after snakeheads with them on top water. These lures hop across the top of the water really quickly and are relatively weedless. And you can see they come in a few shapes and they always have the dress tail and those weedless hooks. Well, I'm not much for making a direct copy, but I think I came up with a really good idea to modify this design and get just a little better lure. Stick around. Okay, so let's design this lure. Now, this is a topwater lure that uh, it has that wedge shape on it that makes it jump as you pull it back. Typically, uh, it has a double hook or a, a frog hook is what the, they normally call it. And that hook is usually uh, dressed with a skirt or something and it's uh, weedless. So it has some sort of weedless gait on it. We're gonna build this one a little different because I think I want that hook more uh, sort of rigidly connected to the body. I don't want it just sort of dangling and sinking down behind the lure. I want it sort of rigid, but not rigid. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's draw it out. So that's the general shape. You can see there's a steep wedge. So this angle is kind of critical. It's not doesn't have to be exact. It needs to be steep enough to act as a planing surface and uh, not so steep to push water. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what that might be. And now I'll go ahead and do a direct measurement. And just eyeballing it out, it looks like it's right around 50 degrees. Call it 50 degrees. Now the rest of the lure is pretty simple. It's sort of teardrop shape, so I'm going to make it on the lathe. I think I can create the general shape, if you can imagine this continued, and then cut it off on that line. And then later on, I'm going to grind down this part. Typically people put double hooks on this, or frog hooks is what they normally call them. And essentially that's just a two barbed hook. They have a pretty long shank. And along with that, most people generally include some sort of skirt. And in addition to that, the hooks typically have a weedless gate on them of some kind. But I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do it a little differently and I'll tell you why. I want my hook a little more connected. I want it to be sort of firm in the body, but not completely attached. I want it to be able to break away, but be set so it doesn't float down. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a slot in the middle of the body that goes up just a ways, about a third of the way, and makes room for the hook to set in there. I'm gonna go ahead and run a single wire down from the tie-on eye down for a hook eye. The hook will be a single hook, long shank. To keep it in place so it doesn't drop down, I'm gonna embed two tiny magnets right there. And then to keep it weedless, I'll embed a weed guard in the body. And that should complete the design. I should end up with a lure that is lethal and gets more hookups than your typical jumping frog. Now, I also want to have some sort of dressing in the back, something that looks like legs. So I'll go ahead, drill small holes here, and I'll use some fly tying material to make small leg-like protrusions. And that should give me a real nice look in the water. When the fish hits and hooks up, the hook will come unconnected from those magnets and hang down, allowing the body just to swing free. There'll be a direct connection between your line, or my line, and the hook, and I should be able to get good hookups and good solid fights. Let's go to the lathe and start building. Okay, I've already got a blank going. Uh, I've got it down to the diameter I want to begin with on the very wide point. 
of the lure and I need to just uh, refine it a little bit. It's a little wavy. Okay, I'm eyeballing these dimensions. I really do want to make one just a little larger than the other, or a little longer anyway, just to play around with size and see what happens. So I need to come in a little bit. I want to. I want this to taper down, and of course, this will taper way back. Okay, I got the general shape. This one's a little bigger than this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and sand it. Okay, so I just finished the fine sanding. Now I just need to make some cuts to make this work. Pretty happy with the shape, and this grain looks pretty nice too. So now I just need to um, figure out how I'm going to make my, my diagonal cuts and how I'm going to set eyes in it too. I'm going to go ahead and, and draw a line across just to call that the belly and that'll be my uh, working line and we'll go from there. So by knowing the caliper of the, the body and the angle I can do a little quick calculation and I know how far back to go with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mark where I want the eyes to go, and then I can separate the two lures and take them off their stock, and then we'll do the angle cut, which shouldn't be too tough, I hope. Okay, now I've got my location for my eyes. Now I just sketch them in, so I know that's what that was. Okay, everything's marked where I want to mark it. Now it's time to go to the bandsaw and get these guys separated out. Okay, it turns out actually doing it on the belt sander is actually quicker. I have a little more control and I can uh, get that angle just how I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull it back just a little more and then we'll go from there. That should be about right. Now I just need to refine this curve a little bit and we're done. Now I want to put a little flat spot on the bottom, not much, just something to make it a little less round. And now I'll just do some finished sanding and we'll start getting ready to put some hardware in this thing. Okay, now I've got a center line sketched in here and I need to drill down for my little cavity. That should do it. Here's the hook I'm going to use. It'll set way in there and should stick out enough to be dangerous. Okay, so now I've got this slot cut and this should fit pretty nicely in there. Uh, it's a matter of getting my wire harness in here. 
So my intentions is to make that wire harness one piece. This way I don't have to worry about having enough room for a uh, split ring in there. So I'm just going to have this attached to my harness. And so that means I've got to cut through for my wire harness. So I'll just sketch in a center line and then I can eyeball a refined location for my hook eye. And I want it to be about a quarter of the way down from the top. So that's probably where I'm going to drill the hole. Okay, so I've got a rough fit on the magnets. Still got a lot of sanding to do. Got to fix these little Mars that I put in it by mistake. Got a hole drilled so I can get my uh, harness in there. And the magnets are in so you can kind of see what the results are going to be. Okay, now I need to make a cut that's going to reach down to the hole I, I drilled. I think that works pretty good. Now all I got to do is make the harness. But I've got to include the, uh, the hook in that harness. Okay, so I'm going to do a little dry fit here to see how this eye is going to work. So I just put a tiny kink in there just to see if it's going to fall in the right spot. So now I've got to make an eye here, give it a couple of wraps. We'll refine the shape just a little bit and it'll be ready to embed in here and I'll have to resin it in. That should do it. Okay, so I've got this fit in there pretty nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some UV to finish off the seal inside there, uh, but that'll be right after I actually put this in permanently, and that's coming up. I'm gonna sand down here, uh, and I've got some saw marks I'm gonna fix, and when I'm done with all that, I should be ready to start painting. So I'm just using some UV clear and this little skinny little micro applicator and I'm going to fill this gap before I put the wire harness in. Okay, so I've got it in there. It's pretty set. I'm just following it down now to get it flush the surface and we'll be ready to paint in a second here. I've gone ahead and put a uh, automotive white base coat or a primer. I'm going to do a really simple frog paint scheme. I'm going to go yellow for the bottom third, a bright green for the uh, middle third, and then a dark green on top, and then we'll do some uh, patterning around the eyes and coming back. And hopefully it'll look pretty nice. I'll put a little bit of red in the middle or orange in the middle of the lip, and that should do it. Okay, we'll start off with testers. Opaque yellow.
I've got this thing ready for clear coating. I'm pretty happy with it. It's got a few little flaws, but nothing <laughs> that it's gonna show after I clear coat it. So what I've done is I've clear coated in advance the little slot where the magnets are, where that uh, hook will set in. I can go ahead and coat it entirely, put it in my turner, and in about 45 minutes, it'll be almost ready. <laughs> She's set. Now we've got a nice clear coat on it. The next step is to put in the little attachments and then I'll wipe it down again with some alcohol and I'll give it another clear coat and we're ready to fish. So the next step will be to set up the uh, uh, hook gate here, the weedless hook gate. I like to use this nylon mono to create the, uh, uh, the gate. This is a 125 pound uh, clear mono. And what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in the top of the lure, and then I'll have this little gate right there to protect it from weeds. Now I'm gonna use a 1 16th bit, and you can see I'm gonna just align this thing with the tip. Find the right spot right about there, and then I'll, I'll get it started, and then I'll angle it. And you can, should be able to slide that right in there. And that should do it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right about there. And then I'll put a little kink in it so that it's actually pointing towards the tip. And I'm gonna use a little bit of UV. I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath the UV light and I'll be right back. And so I'd like to go about 3 16th past the hook tip. That'll give me a nice gate there, keep it out of the weeds, and uh, it'll still allow for a good hook set, and this thing will rotate out and be able to really uh, allow you to fight that fish. It's one, and we're doing all this with this UV glue, or <laughs> with the UV clear cloak. Do not want these things to come out. Okay, we'll let we'll let it turn a little bit on this small UV turner. You get those little droplets set. And we're about ready to go fishing with this thing. Okay, here it is. Finished and ready to go fishing. Now there's a storm rolling in, so I won't be able to fish for very long. But we'll give this a shot. So, one of the really nice things about having this hook up and out of the water is that you have reduced drag in the back. With those other hooks, with the double hooks in the back, you get a lot of drag, and that means you don't get the, get the lure to twitch. Also, you can actually take this lure and use it like a jitterbug, and it'll wobble back and forth like a jitterbug. Let me show you. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can find anything out here in the few minutes that I have. You can see I can really, I can take it through some really heavy. Ooh, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh, he came off. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I was so afraid to hit the GoPro with my hand that I didn't set the hook. Well, we gave it a good shot. Uh, I'm gonna have to call it quits. I don't have a whole lot of time to fish tonight. Got one good swat at it and didn't quite get on the hook, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the lure. So be sure you check out the uh, Engineered Angler Facebook page and see the updates so you can see what I catch with it and the paint job on the larger lure. Thanks for watching. If you guys are enjoying these videos and you're getting something out of them, certainly subscribe and share them with your friends. I'll see you on the next video.